I'm Ryan Taylor, head athletic trainer at the University of Maine. Let's go into the Mike Kessick Sports Medicine office. Our athletes, when they enter into the athletic training room, first thing they'll do is they'll biometrically scan in, thumb or finger, on the scanner, and their name will pop up. And at that time, they will select the treatment or the reason for the treatments are here. So let's say you had an ankle injury. You'd come in, you'd scan in, you'd say, Black Bear is here for an ankle injury. And then they'd click the athletic trainer that they normally work with for therapy and rehab. University of Maine Varsity Hockey. It's hard to believe that it started here in a field next to the river, a puddle that was turned to ice during the winter season. But that's where it started. And three years ago, it moved from here to here, the Alphonse Arena. Three years ago, it all began when Harold Alphonse dropped the opening puck and received the personal thanks of every Maine Black Bear hockey player and the first of what would be many thunderous ovations to echo in this new Black Bear home. Well, I, I think a lot of the things about the Alphonse, about the support within the community, about how passionate everybody is about Maine hockey, I think all of those things are pretty much the same. Um, college hockey has changed an awful lot since then. I mean, you know, we, we basically had a wagon here for the three years that I spent here, the 90-91 season. Uh, through the 92-93 season, uh, we didn't lose very many games, and you know I can remember uh, walking out to the bench, home or on the road, and thinking, well, you know, we're, I know we're going to win this game. I just wonder what the final score is going to be, you know. And uh, it's a little bit different now. There's there's parity throughout college hockey. There's a lot of great teams. Uh, it used to be back then there were maybe a handful of teams across the country had a legitimate chance to win everything. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's much greater than that now, and all the games are tight, you know. Don't allow players to get free. Penalty was on right. Here's Lawson in, center pass, a short-handed goal by Correa. I think one of the things that's, that's great for us is uh, you know, this is a great place to come and be focused on your academics and your athletics without uh, an excessive amount of distractions. Every university has distractions, but I think here um, everybody knows who you are, everybody loves you, but everybody's also watching you, right? And uh, our players understand that, but, but I really believe that we grow closer when when it's a little bit tough for us, you know. Reality is, what is a three and a half hour bus ride? The, the grand reality is it's nothing, okay? So, you know, you come to Orono, you get the best atmosphere in college hockey, you get a bunch of people at the university that want you to be outstanding as a student, I want you to be an NHL player one day, I want you to be a national champion, and, and everybody around here has time for you. I'm not sure it's like that everywhere else. I won't speak ill of anybody else, but, uh, but that's how it is here, and we're pretty proud of it. Well, the, atmos the atmosphere here at the Alphon is the best in all of college hockey. I mean, I've been in most of the, most of the great rinks and seen college games uh, Rinks that also are renowned for their atmosphere and whatnot, whether it's Cornell or the Yost Arena at Michigan. Uh, you know, perhaps I'm biased, but uh, I don't think uh, there's any facility that approaches the kind of energy and atmosphere that we have when the old girls full here. I mean, even our competitors talk about how great an atmosphere we have here. So. Uh, the arena, it's uh, the way it's built, and, and because of the way it's built, it's, how loud it is and, and how intimate it is, I mean, that's certainly one thing. Um, our facilities downstairs are, are tremendous. 
Um, but more than anything else, you know, it's a family atmosphere here at the University of Maine, and, and not just within the hockey program. It's the way everybody in the community is connected, everybody at the university is connected. Uh, we have all the accoutrements of, uh, you know, uh, any large you know, flagship campus, state university system, any state in the country, yet we still have that small college feel because we don't have 40,000 here, you know. And so I think it's a unique experience because of the family piece, because of the intimacy, because of the rank, because of the history of our program. There are a million things, you know, you don't have enough time in this segment for me to list them all. When it's time to tackle the tough winter jobs, break through with a Fisher XV2 V-Plow. Towering flared wings deliver snow rolling action like you've never seen. Hidden obstacles are a given, but the Fisher Trip Edge system ensures the plowed snow stays where it belongs, in front of the blade. Reliable double acting cylinders lock the wings together at the touch of a button for straight blade operation or clean back dragging. Learn more about the XV2 V-Plow at fisherplows.com or by visiting Bangor Truck Equipment. You support your black bears at the game. Why not support them everywhere you go? The exclusive Black Bear Debit Card only at Maine Savings. The Black Bear Debit Card is free to you and supports the Alphon Fund each time you use your card for a purchase. Just open a red wallet account at Maine Savings. Stop into our College Avenue branch or any of our other convenient branches. Show your pride. Make a difference. The exclusive Black Bear Debit Card only at Maine Savings. Learn more at mainesavings.com. I'm Ryan Taylor, head athletic trainer at the University of Maine. Let's go into the Mike Kessick Sports Medicine office. Our athletes, when they enter into the athletic training room, first thing they'll do is they'll biometrically scan in thumb or finger on the scanner, and their name will pop up. And at that time, they will select the treatment or the reason for the treatments are here. So let's say you had an ankle injury. You'd come in, you'd scan in, you'd say, Black Bear is here for an ankle injury, and then they'd click the athletic trainer that they normally work with for therapy and rehab. We've obviously changed a lot in the past few years, especially in here. Since I was a student, this room is completely revamped, which is awesome, and it's starting to be perfectly functional for what we need and, and the volume of people we see. I can honestly say in my six years here, this entire room's changed. <laughs> like, we, uh, we used to joke it was kind of the dungeon, and now it's like, you know, we have athletes coming in every day going, oh my God, I can't get away how nice this looks now. You know, it's, it looks like you look on TV what a training facility looks like, this is it. You know, you have space, everything's wide open for the most part. You have all the machines you need, all the tables you need. You know, we have amazing resources available to us, and uh, the renovations really made that possible. Now our hydro area has just been completely revamped in the last year. It used to be a half wall and we had, as you can see, the old uh, stainless steel tubs, and uh, we've gone out and purchased the high-end cold immersion tubs for active recovery after workouts. So our athletes will get into these tubs. As you can see, this one's set at 53 degrees, that one's set at 51 degrees, and they go in for 10 minutes, and it's used to help with recovery after lifts or practices, games, etc and it is part of their recovery. So when you look at all 450 athletes, uh, these tubs get a lot of work, a lot of uh, 
A lot of clientele come through here and these are a great addition to our teams. As a student athlete, when you walk in here, you can expect to be greeted right away, whether it's your athletic trainer or another one of my coworkers. Um, super friendly. We always want to do what we can for you, even if we have limited time. Um, so we're all working together. You'll get to know everyone. You'll get to know what you can come in and do on your own and, and what's good for you, and then you can come in and talk to us about whatever. But the biggest thing I would say is that it's open, it's welcome. We try to be here all the time. We try to be accommodating so that no one feels left out. Um, and we just try to make it a universal message, you know, that if you've got a problem, no matter how small or big, please come and speak to one of us, whoever you're comfortable with. But we try to we try to know everyone by face and by name and and just keep it a tight, a tight knit community, I'd say. Like right now, I just treated, I think, six people in the last 45 minutes. So, you know, you're busy. You stay focused, you meet different people, you talk all day, you know, you have fun. It's, it's a great environment and, I mean, the fact it's been six years, I remember coming here and thinking, hey, you know, it's my first job, maybe be here a couple, but I've been here six, so there's a reason. I kind of keep coming back, I guess. Next is our main taping area here in Mike Kessick Sports Medicine Center. This little L-shaped area is where we'll tape our athletes before practices, workouts, games, whatever the competition might be. Across the way, our eight treatment tables that are connected with a variety of different modalities from ultrasound, electric stimulation, lasers, uh, compression units, um, recovery pumps. So outside of Mike Kessick Sports Medicine Center, we have two plaques. And I think this is really important because these two gentlemen, Stanley Walsh and Wes Jordan, uh, we're athletic trainers here. Stanley Wallace was here from 23 to 59, and Mr. Jordan was here from 65 to 97. Both of these men are in the National Athletic Trainers Hall of Fame, and both of these men are considered leaders in the science of athletic training, and we are one of the few universities across the country that can say they have two former uh, employees in the National uh, Hall of Fame. So Maine, I mean the thing that I think I love the most, I'm a Maine guy obviously, so working at my own university gives me pride. I'd be lying if I said it didn't. Like I like walking around saying I'm at a Division I university in my home state. But honestly, the people in the environment's incredible. You know, it's, yes, it's a Division I, but at the same time we're tight-knit across all boards. You know, every game you go to, you'll see different athletes, you'll see different staff. It's a family, more or less, you know. You'll go through the hallway, you won't walk by somebody. It's a conversation. You know, every athlete you see, I mean, I like to pride myself on knowing I say every athlete. So I like to think that, you know, at other universities, you're probably not going to get that. But here, it's, I mean, it's a staple. You know, we care about hockey, we care about football, we care about, and not just us, but everyone. We want to know how they are, how the team's doing, their health, their life. You don't know how many times that, I've sat down and had a 30-minute conversation about Christmas break. Like that's just the kind of nature of here, and it's it's incredible. It makes it fun to come to work every day. With DD Perks, you get upgrades like speeding past the line and a free beverage when you join. And the best part is, after you, that upgrade feeling stays with you all day. Experience the upgrade effect. Download the Dunkin' app and enroll today. EBS Building Supplies is your partner in home improvement with a location near you. We're your locally owned neighborhood hardware store. At EBS, we've got a selection that can't be beat and everything you need to make your next home improvement project simple. We'll even deliver what you need for free. Best of all, we'll take care of you with know-how and a smile every time, which gives you more time to enjoy your handiwork. EBS Building Supplies can do, just ask.
Hi, I'm Claire Fogler. And I'm Avery Fogler. And we are from Stonyville Dairy Farm in Exeter. Do you have a picky eater at home? Can't get them to eat their vegetables? Why not try a smoothie? Just combine one frozen banana, one cup blueberries, one cup frozen spinach, one tablespoon honey, two thirds cup of milk, and one third cup of plain Greek yogurt. Blend and enjoy. Ready, set, feel up. Duncan has lots of fall favorites to root for. Maple pecan, pumpkin, maple sugar bacon. But on game day, we root for one team. One team, baby. Win the fall, folks. a sport person like I think it was like seventh grade I was with a group of friends and we were like we're gonna try like volleyball so I tried volleyball didn't really like it uh, like that cuz uh, the short shorts like I didn't really like the short shorts and then eighth grade year I started basketball um, and then I went further I really liked it so I stick with it and I went to like an AU tryout and started playing AU and then it like became something I did like throughout the whole entire year like I just stayed in the gym. It's a good experience, like a great experience. Like when I first came here um, my teammates was like, hey, like, we're women's basketball, like, everyone loves to watch women's basketball here, like, and I didn't really understand it, like, until, like, I was, like, my, our first game at the arena, like, able to witness the people, fans come out and support us, um, and, like, we just had a previous uh, game versus UMBC, and a lot of people came out, and to see a lot of people come out, it's really good to fill up the arena, the arena's pretty nice, and it's fun to play in, too, as well. Like your fans behind you on your side is really good. It's, it's always better than playing on the road and having to create your own energy. So like to be able in an envir environment that revolves around your team and like have everyone like having the energy there and it's excited too. And the kids too as well. Like didn't mention it earlier, but the kids are always there cheering us on. That's that's actually it feels good to know that you're a role model for like the youth around here. So that's good as well.
whatever my team needs, like scoring, rebound, assists. Like I love to like dish out passes. Like I feed off of that too. Like it's, I like that. I really like to attack the basket too. Um, I'm really competitive too as well. Uh, and I like to just sometimes try to kind of like bring that out of my teammates in practice too. Being like energetic is like really important for me too. Like my teammates feed off of me. Like so like I know like if I have like bad energy, like I have to check myself. Like I need to have good energy. Uh, so it's really important for that. And like before games, like um, to get my teammates going, like get them loose, like you know, in the in the right mood or something. Like uh, like we get in the huddle, I'm always talking to them in the huddle and like our pre our pre game like. Uh, like dance or whatever, I always hop in the middle of dance screen, you know, like get us like energetic, so it's really good. Michelle, you okay? Yeah, my shin pads is broken, so like it goes in my knee and fuck it up. So like this oh. helps out all the time. So do you need new shin pads? Yeah. Hey? You don't? You don't have a garter thing that keeps your socks up? Yeah, I do. But I have to get this tape off that. I think I know someone who can get you new pads. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that. It's so annoying to like get it to work. <laughs> so like, I don't know. Kaylee! Ah. You did all that work to be ahead of the defenseman and then you shot. I know. So why would you keep driving? driving? What do you mean? Of I, course you keep driving. I felt like she had me. Oh no. She did it. You I, you had a beautiful sheet of white ice ahead of you. I have really bad perception of when I have No, it's me. because you're looking at the puck. Okay. Just don't look at Put your, this okay. happens every game. Oh, no. Look up, okay? Get over there. Don't give her that room, okay? Stay this side of her. No other way. So when do you want F3 to go there? Just if they're that's close. The, that's the D. The Maddie should be going there. There's no reason for him not to go there. Humo went. Yeah, yeah. Teresa was F3. She backed up with yeah, the yeah. thing. And then Maddie just never went and sat in the middle. Oh no, <laughs> Maggie's going to get confused. <laughs> Did that confuse you? Yeah, no, he just switched it up on the fly there. Good thing I know what we're doing. Good thing. Good thing you're on top of your system. <laughs> what are you confused about? If it goes in there, we're on the board, the middle person. Yeah. Do we stay with those people when it goes over? No, no, when it goes over, you have to slide over all the way to that wing. Anna, are you sleeping with your eyes open? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lid. So you guys are killing, you're going to come out five to eight feet over the top of the blue line. Oh, five to eight feet. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Top of the circle, so maybe here. That's how far you will go. Is that full speed there, or can we like? Um, I would say that that would be probably full speed. Okay. Ricky, when that puck goes to the hash mark, do you want that D to go all the way, or just front? We've always gone all the way all year, unless they have a two on one. Okay, that's what I was. Okay, all right. Yep. Yep. You'll go if they, if you don't have a two on one. So like okay. if they're set up. So there's no one there. Yeah. If there's no one there, you go. If there's someone, then you just gotta read that like the two on one. Okay. Yep. Well, because 
if you're coming up at the front um, and they pass it down low, then you want to keep that pressure on. If, if it was like, if they were set up D, like D to D, and then that pass went down, and then you would go. Right. I mean, like the pass went from here and over there, and Rick and Sarah came all the way up, and Vendy was just chilling in the middle. Yeah, that's fine. So Vendy's chilling in the middle in case it goes back up, then she needs to release. Because Dasha, because she was skating and Dasha was with her, and it, when that puck goes down, we really want them to take that pass back away. Because if Vendy goes, then she's not taking that pass away. She's just going. So then essentially we have the D and the middle person going to the, like the same angle. Right. Where when it's here, when it moves down, Dasha can take this pass away and then the D just fronts there. So they yeah. essentially just switch sides then. Yeah. So then Dasha's just over here. And yeah. I mean, that was like a different situation where that D was walking right. and she was on this side. But so if, if they were set up like this, here to here, Dasha just keeps coming all the way around because yeah. Sarah's here, so the pass is yeah. taken away, and then if it works its way back out to that side, Vendy goes from here. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. No, that's okay.